What is good, boys? Welcome to the channel again. Thank you for stopping by and listening. Uh, it's your boy Hobo Cheese on the open mic night once again. What a great time. So I wanted to hop on here and talk about, so my most recent video, it's kind of like my highest viewed video actually on my account. I mean, I know it's not crazy, but it'll, it's like almost at 3,000 views and it's kind of drummed up some I guess discussion on like what makes a game good and I think the overwhelming majority think that Diablo 4 is obviously not a great game you know in its current state but they there has been some talk about like what makes a game good right and I kind of wanted to talk about that today and before I do there's some things we have to understand there's subjectivity to everything if you know one person's into strategy games they might not like shooters and vice versa so you know if i make every game have strategy gameplay or whatever you know the other person might not like it so but these core concepts right so when i get discussing them i think those these are the things that have a overarching pull in what makes a game good and there's not a lot of them i'll explain them i'm pulling my handy dandy paint tool um and let me type them out here for you and i'm gonna obviously type it in what i think is most important to the game versus uh and dis in the descending order visual audio story and listen okay so let's talk about it so we have gameplay visual and audio story and listen so, or Gavassel for short. So, gameplay, obviously, I think is something that is very common knowledge. I Everybody should know the game has to be fun, right? So, kind of what that means, I mean, this is everything top to bottom from the controls of the game, things that keep you engaged in the game. So, uh, you know, like a slot machine, you know, ha like is constantly keeping you engaged by having to pull that lever right so what what's the like lever mechanic right in the video game what's making you want to come back and you know get that addictive feeling and with that comes immediate and useful rewards as well so what i mean by that is essentially exactly how it sounds right so you do a quest you know you do something in the game and you get x in return that impacts you immediately um, it doesn't have to be you know entirely game changing but you know maybe it's more power maybe it's a new ability right tutorials are famous for doing this in video games you finish the tutorial you get like a you know a first key ability to kind of push you into the next couple hours of the game so something uh, that that little carrot on the stick that you're chasing and when you get it and they have to give it to you the you know they have to give you the carrot eventually and it has to have an impact on how you're playing the game um, the last thing is continuous challenges um, of varying degrees so I'm not saying every game has to be blasting hard all the time and you know I think World of Warcraft is a interesting discussion on this just because the difficulty has ramped up so much over the year i've been i played classic for a bit the other day and it's so much easier but in like a very good way it's you know challenging because it, it feels like you're kind of like surviving in a way <laughs> like obviously it's hardcore so that's like the point but but even just normal classic i could see it do you, like you feel like you're just like a you know like you're a freaking pilgrim you know and with the other you know i feel like i'm playing like deus ex or something and on my demon hunter i'm like apm is like 90 miles per hour and so there's good types of challenge and bad types and th it's always good to have like a steep incline at some point you know if the rewards justify it right so all these kind of work together to justify one another but it, you can't be blasting all the time and you can't be you know very boring all the time it's just varying difficulties that kind of slope and pull with the rewards so summed up yeah it's gameplay right and i think that's that that's the addictive sauce like if you if you have a special sauce in a dish 
its gameplay and it, it needs to be top notch for it to go anywhere and f to keep people engaged uh, the next thing is visual and audio so this is not like uh, obviously like you can say graphics whatever you want but more so I mean you could almost partner this in gameplay in a way um, making sure that the game visually makes sense so what I mean by that is the gameplay you know like if you're standing in a boss ability you should know that you are standing in a boss ability there should be an audio cue if necessary there you know the red floor shouldn't mask the red paint versus the you know red wall versus the red sky and everything is red you know it's okay to have some level of you know de-immersion to paint a better picture for the player because ultimately we're trying to make all these things funnel into gameplay to make gameplay better it, the whole the whole thing should be revolved around gameplay at the center so visual and audio is also very important just for you know immersing you right so putting you in the game making you feel a level of connection to the game and appreciate the art style uh, video games used to be art they technically still are art but I'm gonna say used to be art <laughs> and you have to you should be able to appreciate it kinda like a painting and there's there has to be a level of passion for those artists and those game devs and you can a lot of times see that in the in the game itself I mean here's the thing like let's talk about uh, Minecraft right so this is a game with I mean unmodded right I know modded you can get water that looks realistic like don't go off on me just base Minecraft the graphics you know they're it's blocks like the, you're playing with Legos pretty much right virtual Legos but there's a lot of passion that goes it's a specific art style it's it's like branded in your head and you just know what it is like you know what you're gonna get as soon as you see that art style and that's exactly the type of thing that each game should present itself in its own unique way today we have these like unreal engine clones that you know are just spit out it just looks like the same like smooth skin like you, you know exactly what i'm talking about when i say this but and there, there are key games you know that have their art style that just like hit right they hit really hard and keep you engaged um for the whole thing so the next thing on the list is the story so not everybody is a lore nerd like i am there's a lot of them out there but not i mean it doesn't you know stick with people as much as others right some stories are going to resonate with people differently the importance of this though uh is that it still needs to be good even at a base level so kind of what i mean is you can make the lore in depth right there's a lot of lore in world of warcraft it's gotten really odd over the last few years i'm using world of warcraft because i play that game a lot but there's a really deep and rich story but one of the things that i do semi applaud them for is that you can get a surface level understanding very easily and i think all games need to do this you know the story needs to be good and let me back up i don't mean world of warcraft story is good right now it's it's okay it's just weird so that's just like a little side thing but so back to what i was saying surface level understanding and it has to be good a person should be able to play that game and be able to semi follow what's going on in the story um just through the gameplay alone and what that does is it, it brings attachment to the person have you ever watched a tv show and you have a favorite character inside of that tv show that you like and you don't want to see them die and then they die and it kind of just like breaks your heart a little bit so for me i think the biggest um one of the biggest examples of this for me personally is gears of war <laughs> does anybody remember when dom died like this was my childhood this game i played it so much growing up and i love the story like you know and i played hundreds of hours of online gameplay and you know you'd play as the characters you got to know them throughout the whole kind of like genre of gears of war and then he dies it it kind of tears at your heartstrings a little bit 
um <laughs> does it, it like almost made me want to quit playing because i was so mad i don't know maybe i was too emotionally invested but i think anybody that knows that story you're lying if you said dom didn't hurt a little bit right so anyways shout out to dom rip 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 uh the last thing i wanted to talk about is listen so i think listen is a this one's kind of hard to describe so what i mean by that is obviously feedback right listen to the feedback from the players and get a consensus of like thematic issues so not every one issue like some people are gonna be like i want this stone to be pink you know that those kind of things don't matter right the thematic issues right so diablo 4 just as an example everybody wants a gem stash tab we should have had a gem stash tab immediately and that kind of leads into my next point of this when you listen those changes and the feedback implementation has to be quick it has to be very quick to resolve you're holding people's attention with a thread you are holding it with you know nothing but two little like fingerfuls of strand and there's so many things out there competing for people's attention and if you are not quick to listen to your audience you will lose your audience right and they, they'll because they'll start to see like hey nobody's listening fine that's cool like i had my fun i'll just go check out something else listens a very big part because obviously it affects you know all three of these gameplay visual audio story I, it, it so it's it doesn't really deserve to be in this tier list it's just kind of you know floating out there but I do think it's very important. Obviously, live service games are the biggest proponent of listening. I don't think that, you know, like, <laughs> you know, when we think about, like, Super Mario 64, right? I'm sure there was, like, a play test and things like that, a focus group to improve the gameplay. But th that's real. this listen part is really focused at those live service games which is really the direction a lot of these games are taking nowadays which i i don't really care neither here nor there like it's it is what it is you know i play on a pc so it's like whatever um i don't really care about offline gameplay and i honestly don't mind it because i do pro like if they actually do listen it has the ability to make really great games that last a long time if they you know if right so those are kind of the overarching things that I think about makes a good game. So this is the overall hierarchy that, I mean, I kind of come up with. This is like kind of what I use. It's like a scaffolding to decide games that I want to play or, you know, invest my time into and that I think I'm going to get my best bang for my bucks. And I think the most important thing is, like I said, as long as gameplay is there, a lot of these things will fall in line to some degree, even if they don't fully. There's tons of video games out there that do not have great visuals and don't have great audio or have a subpar story, but their gameplay is top-notch and people play them anyways. And there's tons of examples out there where developers listen and they fix all these things or fix a lot of them. I mean, No Man's Sky is, I think, one of the biggest proponents of this. Cyberpunk obviously fixed a lot of their bugs, listened to some of the community feedback, and, you know, people are all playing that again. In fact, I'm thinking about doing a playthrough of that myself just because it looks, you know, to be a good game. I've never played, but all the, you know, recent updates, things like that have prompted me to want to play the game more. So... It doesn't mean all hope is lost, you know, as long as uh, the developers are invested in the game and they want it to be successful. Because at the end of the day, I think, like anything, you know, you get what you put into it and it is the, it's supposed to be the developer's art piece. And if they put a shit turd in it, you're going to get a shit turd in it. And it is what it is. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, like, comment, subscribe. I appreciate you all. Thanks for stopping by. Later.